Um, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, today, uh, I will introduce uh, the RTMS application in uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And I'm Sarita Wong from Marketing Department of NJ Company. And the, um, the, um, I will begin from the following, uh, following aspects. The first, uh, we will have an overview of this uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And then uh, we will focus on the TMI technique and its application in the treatment of uh, OCD. And uh, we will also introduce some new strategies or, paradigm, uh, or paradigms to improve our uh, RTMI treatment efficacy. And uh, next, uh, we will introduce some safety issues uh, of the application of TMS. So, um, as we know, obsessive compulsive disorder, also called OCD, uh, has been uh, seen as a very widespread, uh, long-term uh, chronic and disabling uh, mental disorder. And uh, this uh, is, is, and this disease is characterized uh, by the uh, obsessive obsession symptoms like the repetitive and persistent thoughts. Images, impulses, or urges that are intrusive and unwanted, and some um, patients will have uh, the compulsive symptoms uh, at the same time. But sometimes they only have one kind of symptoms. But the compulsions um, mainly refer to the repetitive behaviors or the mental act that the individual feels driven to, to perform in response to an obsession according to the rigid rules or to achieve a sense of continuity. And the, the prevalence uh, studies uh, so that the OCD uh, has a lifetime prevalence of 2 to 3 percent. And uh, it has an early, uh, early age onsite. For example, nearly one quarter men had onsite before 10 years of age. And in females, homicide often occurs during adolescence. And the, in general, uh, the highest odds of onset is, is uh, between 18 to 29 years old. And OCD symptoms can persist for decades. And the, uh, the most of the um, patients have serious or moderate impairment. And according to different uh, Areas um, about the about, about the OCD symptom and the, the dimensions of this uh, symptom can be divided into five factors. Yeah, and the, and the, it's note and the, it's worthy uh, noting that uh, nearly eighty percent of respondents uh, with lifetime o OCD met the uh, diagnostic criteria. For another lifetime disorder in the DSM uh, DMS four, and uh, you can see that most of the, the most of the commodity um, is the anxiety disorder. The anxiety disorder and uh, yeah, this is generally anxiety disorder and uh, the mood disorder and uh, some compulsive. Uh, Impulsive uh, control, uh, impulsive control disorders, and uh, the substance use disorder. And the, the uh, pathophysiology of OCD mainly focus on the five uh, aspects. And uh, one, the uh, first is uh, cognitive affective dysfunction. And the, according to this uh, this um, hypothesis, that um, the patients. Um, have this dysfunction, they are uh, they are not able to uh, inhibit their uh, response, and uh, the neurosurgeons uh, neurosurgeons um, hypothesis and is uh, most frequently mentioned uh, mentioned in our studies, and uh, these circuits um, is referred to the cortical cortical thermal cortical circuits. And, uh, and uh, this uh, circuits can um, act uh, by uh, parallel or part uh, partly uh, segregated. For example, you, you can uh, look through uh, this picture. 
Yeah, and uh, mm, in this circuit, then we can divide it into different uh, partial circuit. For example, the sensory motor uh, circuit, and uh, it's uh, highly related with our uh, stimulus response with the uh, habitual behavior. And uh, the dorsal cognitive circuit, uh, it's related uh, with uh, working memory, planning, and emotion regulation. So, uh, according to this circuit, we, uh, we can also um, choose different uh, treatment paradigm. Uh, for example, we can choose different targets. And uh, there are also uh, some functional, uh, functional alterations and the structural uh, alterations uh, in OCD patients. And besides this, uh, there are also some uh, molecular um, dysfunction, um, for example, the serotonin or dopamine and the glutamate abnorm uh, abnormalities um, in OCD patients. And uh, when we look through the OCD treatment strategies, and the first line um, treatment strategies are the uh, pharmacotherapy and the, the psychotherapy. Uh, but, but when we use the pharmacotherapy, um, nearly 50% of patients um, can uh, will drop uh, because of the side effects of the uh, medicine. And only um, part of the patients can benefit from this therapy. And uh, for psychotherapy, especially the exposure and the response prevention therapy, um, it's not um, sufficient to treat patients with severe uh, and a refractory OCD patient uh, symptoms. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and we can also see this. Uh, it's it's efficacy from the from a meta analysis with uh, more than one thousand patients. And also, when we use ERP therapy, it will take a long time to to have an ideal effect for the patients. So, uh, a very, a very a higher uh, efficacy and uh, non-intrusive uh, with no uh, side effects uh, technique is very necessary for the OCD treatment. And the uh, um, TMS technique is just uh, that uh, new uh, technique that it can modulate uh, our neural function. And this is the uh, basic theory of um, TMS. And the, the TMS uh, in the standard process, uh, normally we, you, uh, we place uh, electromagnetic coil uh, on the subject's uh, scalp, and the uh, current uh, will uh, produce through this coil, and uh, now, this uh, magnetic field will uh, penetrate uh, our scalp and the skull and uh, generate effect on our brain. And uh, it has a, it caused a various uh, physiological and biochemical reactions and affects the, the metabolism and neural excitability in the brain. So as uh, to improve or treat uh, our mental or neurological diseases. And uh, um, how uh, can um, PMS have the effect uh, to treat disorders? Um, it, it, have, uh, it can be summarized in five uh, in aspects. First, uh, PMS can stimulate the secretion of the neurotrophic factors. And besides, it can affect the security of neurotransmitters in brain issue. Next, it also can regulate our cortical excitability and alter um, our cerebral blood flow um, and the metabolism. And besides, uh, uh, PMS can also regulate cortical plasticity. And uh, here, uh, in our clinical um, use of PMS, uh, especially the repetitive PMS, yeah, also we call it PMS, uh, we mainly use high frequency and all uh, low frequency. 
and the high fermentation, it can have a long-term potentiation effect uh, on our genetic transmission. And uh, the low fermentation has a long-term depression function. And next, we will introduce the specific treatment strategies uh, by using MIT in, treat, uh, in treating OCD uh, patients. And so, uh, since, the, since the birth of the heart attack technique uh, since 1985, um, this technique has been widely validated in, in clinical researches. And this is a uh, guideline published by the International Federation of Clinical Neurophysiology. And uh, they also update uh, the, um, the guideline um, by four years. And uh, this is the newest uh, guideline. So we can uh, look through uh, this uh, table and find that uh, RPMS uh, has been recommended in several uh, mental disorders and uh, neurological disorders. For example, um, there are uh, level A recommendation, uh, which means it has a definite anti-depression uh, depression efficacy uh, in depression by using hyperinflation RPMS over the left, um, left DRPFC. And for um, OCD, uh, yeah, um, <coughs> the recommendation level is C. Um, because uh, there's still not uh, enough good quality evidence to prove its efficacy uh, in OCD. And this is uh, uh, researchers, uh, this guideline reference to uh, generate this recommendation. So, yeah. and, and uh, next we will introduce uh, these uh, studies very specifically. And the next is uh, the FDA approval uh, of the RPMS in different um, disorders. For example, um, at the earliest um, 2008, RPMS has been approved by FDA to treat the major deep price state disorder. And in 2018, uh, BPMS for obsessive compulsive disorder is approved. And in 2020, double clone coil for OCD has been approved. Yeah. And the, um, there are many factors that we should pay attention to uh, in uh, using RTMS to uh, treat a different uh, disease in uh, our clinical prognosis. The first is the TMS device function um, and the TMS coils. Um, yeah, but uh, this is uh, the very essential um, very essential condition that we should the patient to. And next uh, is the tactics we choose to treat patients. And uh, also, uh, stimulation technique is very important. And uh, uh, there are some new stimulation protocols that try to improve the RTMS efficacy. And the, the position uh, accuracy of the target is also uh, very important uh, to um, influence uh, the efficacy of RTMS. And the, the most, uh, and the next we will uh, focus on the target uh, in OCD. And the most frequently used uh, target is the right dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex. And the, the bilateral um, supplementary motor area. So why we choose the right uh, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex? And when uh, we use this target, we also combine with the low frequency RTMS. Uh, this is because uh, according to the uh, former studies, OCD it may be related to the increased neural activity in prefrontal subcortical circuit. And that inhibiting that PFC area may alleviate OCD-related symptoms such as the intrusive thoughts, impulses, and high-level plan by modulating the activity of this uh, cortical, cycle, thermal um, cortical circuit. Yeah. And uh, this is the uh, specific um, stimulus parameters used uh, <clears throat> in studies. 
that both of them are, are the low transition one hertz. Yeah. yeah. And next, we will uh, introduce one by one. Uh, the first is the rapid dose light torture from the cortex. And the, um, this is the study also referenced by the Edison guideline. And uh, this is a uh, RCT study in the, with uh, 45 uh, refractory OCD participants uh, included in this uh, study. And uh, the specific stimulation parameter as follows. Uh, during the study, uh, the subjects are divided into three groups. And the one group is the one hertz, um, one hertz uh, arc uh, group, and the, the second group is 10 hertz. And the, the sham group also used 10 hertz uh, stimulation. Yeah, but uh, when, uh, when uh, we treat the patients in sham, uh, the, 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 the coil is, uh, is particularly late uh, to the job. Uh, Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, and the total pulses is two thousand uh, pulses uh, in each session. And the session continues uh, ten sessions within two weeks. Hmm. Yes, we can see the result uh, of this data. You can see from uh, these uh, outcomes um, are. Evaluated by the year brown objective compulsive scale and the Hamilton SLT scale, and also the clinical global impression um, severity scale. And we can see from the year brown objective uh, comp compulsive scale that uh, both of the group one, uh, that means one hertz group and 10 hertz group, they all, they all had a significantly improvement. Uh, of their um, OCD symptoms, and that's not in the same group. But when we do the two-way ANOVA repeated measure by using its real versus uh, same group and also the time effect, we can only see uh, the significant uh, improvement in the one-third group, which means that uh, only group has uh, significant improvement than sham group. And we can also see the same trend uh, in the in the evaluation of Hamilton and VLT um, scale. And uh, that um, they this one uh, this scale uh, there it didn't have some uh, significant uh, difference yeah, in the different groups. <laughs> from the figure that uh, in one hertz group, the improvement can uh, maintain to the three months. Yeah, this is the this is the three months column. Yeah, and then the, the effect, yeah the effect of one hertz um, can maintain to three months, but we can not have the de la FPC, asta e exact ce vom să determinați. Ah, ok, deci acea nu e doar că e foarte non-invaziv. Adică 10 Hz crește riscul de criză de pilă. Can you see the chart clearly? I'm not going to see it. Ok. Can I continue? What? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, please continue. Do you have questions about uh, this study or uh, other contents I just uh, explained? Oh, okay. So I can continue. And if uh, yes, please. Yeah, you can. It's clear for us here. It's clear. Okay. Okay. If you have questions, we can communicate after uh, the presentation. Yeah. Yes, I made the list here. No worry. <laughs> yeah, and we um, just mentioned that uh, the, the long term effect uh, only exists uh, in the reference real world. 
and uh, we can also see the same trend uh, in the uh, anxiety symptom uh, improvement. And uh, this long-term improvement only occurs in one first real group too. And uh, this is also uh, this trend also can be found in the uh, clinical global impression severity scale uh, measure. Yeah, and uh, according to the results we just mentioned, we can conclude that the one hertz RTMS over right DRPFC uh, improved the OCD symptoms more than sham and the 10 hertz RTMS in both the skills we used in this study. And the effect of 10 hertz RTMS do not differ from the sham. And the one hertz RTMS over the right DRPFC has medium term effect on obsessive compulsive symptoms and anxiety. And next is the uh, study by using the bioterrorist supplementary uh, move area as the target. And this is also a multi site RTD study uh, with 22 refractory OCD patients uh, included. And uh, the total sessions is 25. And it's um, applied in six weeks. And the specific stimulation parameters um, is also one hertz, yeah, the low frequency. And uh, yeah, the coil they use is a uh, BW8 coil, and the duration uh, is that. And the total pulses is 900 uh, pulses. And the, the results we can see that, yeah, um, the um, this is the uh, year brown obsessive compulsive skill, and uh, they uh, evaluate uh, they measure they measure the, uh, the symptoms by using this uh, skill uh, at the baseline, and after the first uh, after the first day treatment, this is the baseline result. This is the uh, uh, day one. That means after the first uh, uh, session treatment. And uh, this is uh, two weeks after two weeks treatment, after four weeks treatment, after six weeks treatment. And we can see that after the all of the all sessions of the RTMS six weeks treatment, there's a significant uh, improvement in this uh, ear bra skill. Yeah, in active group. Yeah, but not uh, significant improvement in sham group. And uh, we can also uh, see the long-term effect of RTMS treatment. And uh, this week seven uh, is the is the six weeks after the end of all RTMS treatments. Six weeks follow-up uh, evaluation. And we can also see uh, in uh, active and the same group there's a there's a significant uh, improvement difference between these groups. And uh, there are also supplementary data that can, uh, um, that can give the, the data that um, the, the improvement of active group can maintain to the six weeks uh, follow up. And uh, this is the, mm, the clinical global impression still results, and we can also say that uh, after the uh, all of the treatments, there's a significantly different uh, improvement uh, between active and the sham group. Um, Okay. No, it'll, it'll not, uh, it's um, it's mostly worth uh, it, it, it's worth not, noting that uh, yeah the response um, the response rate uh, of the active group is about twenty percent and uh, it's uh, it's more than uh, the previous studies and the previous studies um, of reported uh, the and the previous RTD studies have a 67% response rate uh, in 20 uh, treatment sessions. But uh, in this study, 
uh, we use the six weeks of treatment and uh, we achieve uh, 80% response rate. So this implicates that maybe longer treatment can have a better effect. <coughs> and this is also a, um, a study uh, used, the, used the target uh, bilateral SMA. And this paper is published this year. And uh, it's study done by a Chinese hospital in Guangzhou. And in this study, they, it's a not a CT study, but uh, they use uh, RTMS group and the control group only, uh, only using medicine. And the, the total subjects is uh, 50, uh, 52 moderate level of OCD patients. And the total uh, sessions is 28 and applied in four weeks. And the stimulation parameter is similar to the, uh, the former study. Yeah. But uh, the total health is, is more uh, than the former study. <coughs> and it's too silent in the session. And we can see the results uh, of the RTMS group that the partial response and the, the whole response, the, yeah, the total is about 76%. Which means that maybe the total, uh, when we increase the total health in the session, maybe can have a better effect than. <laughs> Uh, less healthy in this session. Because it's 20, the total session is 20, but the form of uh, study used a uh, uh, six-week session in about 25 persons. And then we can also see the results from the year ground obsessive compulsive skill that in the RTMS group, there's a significant decline of the skill after the RTMS treatment. And uh, we can also from this, uh, see, see the results from this, uh, this table. And, uh, um, because this study also use um, magnetic spectral, uh, magnetic resonance spectral scorpion skill, uh, the, this technique to evaluate the blue mid, uh, test, uh the neural Transmitters uh, in the, in our brain area, and uh, you can see these people is the neural uh, metabolic metabolized uh, change in response to the RTMS treatment, and the, the significant uh, change um, occurred in in the right striatum and the, the left striatum. Um, because according to previous studies, um, the, the uh, neural uh, metabolites, uh, especially the glumate and the, the glumate and the glumy, uh, glutamine uh, complexes, um, is an indicator of the activity of the um, diatom. Yeah. So um, after treatment, um, the uh, the, the, uh, the, we can see an uh, increase of the neurotransmitters also uh, we can found uh, we can speculate that there's a uh, um, activity improvement uh, in striatum. And the striatum is a very important um, area in the um, cortical striatal uh, thalamus acid, uh, which is highly related to the OCD symptom. And this is uh, the authority by using opposite from the cortex as the RTMS targets. And uh, this is a double blind crossover study, not RCT study. And they only uh, use uh, 22 OCD patients. And uh, by applying, applying 10 sessions of RTMS treatment uh, in one period, and uh, uh, after one period of treatment, um, the, there's one month, uh, one month walks out, and then we have the second uh, alternative treatment. Uh, yeah, they yeah, change, change the treatment uh, between the groups. And we can see from the uh, this table that the specific uh, parameter we use is also uh, one third frequency. And the yeah the number of houses in each session is 
uh, Western um, uh, to handle the policies. And we can see from uh, the results from the year brown uh, scale that there's a significant um, reduction of the field goal uh, after the first period of treatment in the active uh, RPMS group and not the sham group. And uh, that there's not uh, not a significant difference between the active uh, period and the sham period uh, in total. Mm. Uh, but uh, um, by combining with the PET results, and we can um, we can see that uh, there's a bilateral difference uh, in the prefrontal, especially the orbital frontal cortex. And, and, and we can also from the uh, see the results from Figure Two that. Um, the decrease uh, in the right of OS state um, is most significant, uh, which means that uh, maybe uh, OS state, uh, that means the orbital from cortex can be uh, used as a potential target uh, for RTMS uh, in OCD treatment. And uh, next, we will introduce a study by using um, bilateral um, medial prefrontal cortex or anterior single to cortex as a target. And uh, this study is um, performed in, uh, it, it published in 2019. And uh, in, this, in this study, we, they use uh, its coil, uh, a deep coil, deep RTMS coil. And uh, it's a uh, Multi site center study, and uh, it's also an RCT study with 94 adaptations uh, included uh, in this study. Uh, yeah, but uh, the, whole, the whole treatment uh, session um, is uh, five sessions per week in the first five weeks, and four sessions in week two. That means the total treatment session is 29. Yeah, but between the RTMS treatment, they will use a uh, probable person um, process to introduce, uh, say, OCD symptoms. And the results um, of this study, uh, we can see from this uh, figure that um, the um, in full response rate, and we can see that uh, the active treatment has a significantly more response uh, rate than the sham treatment. And also, we can see this significant difference in the half of response. And uh, yeah, it mean, this means that the EPMS uh, stimulation over the medium um, prefrontal cortex and uh, the Anterior, uh, anterior singulate cortex is a safe and effective intervention for improving OCD symptoms in patients who fail to receive sufficient benefit from treatments uh, with uh, medicine and uh, the CBT therapy. And yeah, and the, mm, mm, as you can see that we just mentioned that the double coil, double coil uh, double coin coil is also approved by FDA uh, to treat OCD. And uh, this uh, this uh, decision is uh, it's made because uh, by uh, comparing the electric field of the double coin coil uh, and the X coil, and they found the same uh, electrical uh, field in the MPFC area, and they speculate that. Uh, the double point coil may have the same effect uh, as the its coil in OCD treatment. And then now there is a meta analysis uh, by uh, looking through the RCT studies published um, to until the 2020 March 25, and the, there are 
22 RDP studies were included and with uh, 698 patients in this meta-analysis. And the mean number of treatment sessions was 16.5, ranging from 10 to 30. So these sessions can also, uh, this number can also be referenced in our uh, clinical treatment. And we can see uh, from uh, the figure two that um, this is the uh, this node. Um, um, at, uh, this, this node uh, refers to the subjects in this uh, group, and uh, you can see that uh, most of the groups are uh, using the high frequency uh, and the targeted the uh, and the, the low frequency targeted the SMA, and the, also the low frequency targeted the PRPRPFC is mostly used. And the, the compared between uh, groups um, is, uh, um, is represented by the, uh, the thickness of this line. So the comparison between this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, paradigm uh, with sham uh, are the most. And we can also see the result from the pairwise meta-analysis of the efficacy and the, the tolerability. And we can see that uh, both of these strategies you know, have, a, have a better improvement. Yeah. That means they have a good efficacy compared with the sham group and uh, with the low frequency target target with the DRPFC as a better efficacy. And uh, when we see the tolerability um, by comparing different strategies with the sham group, and the, we found that the tolerability is not different from the sham group. And this is the network meta-analysis of the FC and the tolerability uh, of different strategies. And we can so uh, we can see uh, the tolerability of the efficacy uh, of, of different strategies through this. And uh, they found the same uh, results as the higher wise meta analysis. Uh, what's the difference between uh, these two different meta analysis techniques? Um, this is a direct uh, comparison between um, between, for example, the low frequency DRPFC uh, with the sham, uh, but the network meta analysis also use uh, use the indirect comparison methods to compare uh, the efficacy and the tolerability difference between those. And according to the meta analysis results, uh, we can conclude that for efficacy, low frequency IPRMS over the dorsolateral pre frontal cortex and the supplementary local area and the high frequency RTMS over the DRPFC were more effective than sham RTMS. And regarding tolerability, RTMS treatment strategies were similar to the sham RTMS. And the estimated ranking uh, probabilities of treatment so that the low frequency RTMS over the DRPFC might be the most uh, effective intervention among all RTMS studies. This, this, this line uh, represents the um, low frequency uh, target of the um, DRPFC. And the, um, now uh, some researchers have tried to uh, use different uh, ways to improve RTMS treatment. And the first is the improvement of uh, the protocol of, uh, of TMS. So uh, the, we, we all know that uh, ITBS uh, has been approved by FDA to treat depression, and uh, it has uh, it can have uh, same effect um, as the first um, can hurt the protocol uh, by treating major depression and uh, by using less time. For example, ITBS, when we use ITS protocol, we only use uh, 600 pulses and the total time um, is less than four minutes. 
a traditional um, PMS uh, is actually the high frequency and the low frequency, the, the treatment time can be very long. And uh, when you use ITBS, uh, the uh, graphic uh, paradigm simulator is as low. It can use uh, the total power, 600 pounds. And uh, the coil is a bigger gauge coil. And this is a published uh, uh, ran randomized uh, crossover design and uh, with only 10 patients included. And the treatment uh, of one period is five days a week. And uh, yeah, after uh, five days a week and uh, uh, continues for one month. And uh, the patients were clinically uh, and, uh, e and uh, by using EG re-evaluated uh, immediately after the one month treatment and, uh, and uh, the one month uh, after the end of the treatment and uh, three months after the treatment and six months after the treatment. And each patient was subject to the alternative treatment after that. And uh, this is the results of the study. And uh, we can uh, see that you know, in the uh, year from obsessive compassive skill score, skill, uh, this score uh, decreases significantly in nearly all patients uh, after one month's treatment. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, we can see there's a number here. Um, it means at least a 20, 25% decrease uh, goal uh, in this field. Um, this is also defined as a partial, de a partial response uh, by the RTMI treatment. So uh, the, if the, we can see that if all the patients uh, have a partial response, it means uh, the RT, uh, the, this ITBS protocol may have a better than um, the traditional RTM, RTMS treatment. And uh, this uh, effect uh, can also maintain to three months after uh, all of the um, PMI treatment ends. So uh, maybe RTM, uh, ITBS protocol may have a better effect and uh, um, by using less time in, treat, uh, in the clinical treatment of OCD, and uh, it may also have a long-term maintenance effect. And uh, we can also see the tolerability here. None of the patients reported any adverse uh, effects during and after the treatment. And uh, in this study, they also used the uh, they also acquired uh, the rest, rest state in EEG data um, between, uh, before the RTMI treatment and after the treatment. And they also, we also can see a uh, uh, skill uh, score change, um, the, a relation between the skill score change and uh, the synchronization uh, between uh, different uh, brain areas connections. So maybe uh, the ITM, ITBS uh, over the L, um, the left, the DRTFC um, can uh, be uh, the effect in treating OCD uh, by using, by uh, modulating the, uh, the, the brain area connections and uh, especially the frontal parietal uh, of our networks. Um, which are involved uh, in the OCD video uh, pathology. And next, uh, there's a, a new uh, technique that uh, that means uh, accelerated RTMS technique. Uh, so, what's the meaning? Um, normally, we um, treat uh, patients uh, one time, uh, one session uh, per day. Yeah, but in this survey. Um, they treat patients twice a day. And the, but the other um, 
sitting in the pyramid is similar as the uh, sedation um, pigment. Um, so in this study, we use 100 artemis uh, on the bilateral um, SMA. And the, the total time, uh, treatment time, is uh, one week. And the, that means the, the, uh, and the one day uh, the calcis is 7,200 calcis. That we can see the results from this skill that even though we only use one week RTMI treatment, there is still uh, a significant um, skill reduction at, uh, at the T1 um, evaluation. And the T1 evaluation is the, um, at the end of the RTMI treatment, we evaluate the results. And the, um, there are also uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and the, the, the results can also maintain the, to the three months of follow up evaluation. So maybe uh, for some severe, um, serious uh, OCD symptoms, uh, patients, we can use this accelerated uh, RTMS testing. And the next one is uh, some, some uh, researchers uh, try to improve the um, localization precision uh, of the uh, target. So uh, normally, uh, in a traditional way, uh, we use uh, when, we, when we target a, a specific area, uh, we may uh, uh, use the observation method or uh, by using the EEG tests. Uh, there are some um, specific markers in the 10 to 20 uh, EEG multiples. Yeah, uh, but this is still uh, according to the connected multiple structures of the brain. And it also uh, didn't uh, think of the, uh, the internal structure and the functional difference between uh, individual patients. Yeah, but by using the fMRI technique, we can find the specific, specific um, brain area. Yeah, and the, at, at, the, at the surface of the brain, and which is uh, the, uh, the point, uh, which point is in the, at the surface brain, it's highly correlated with the internal areas that are um, correlated with uh, OCD. So um, this technique, they just use this functional uh, MRI and uh, they use the, and they analyze, analyze the connectivity between uh, the SMA and uh, also the dynamic uh, nucleus uh, deep in the area. And uh, they found the target with the highest connectivity on the um, pre uh, SMA. Yeah, because um, this subthalamic um, nucleus uh, has also used uh, the, the DPS, yeah, the deep, uh, deep brain stimulation techniques as a uh, target and has got uh, great uh, efficacy uh, in the past studies. But uh, it, uh, it's very expensive to use DPS and uh, it's also inclusive. And so um, if we can find a, um, a target uh, which has a high correlation uh, with the, with the subdynamic nucleus, maybe we can um, get, get a better um, RTMI treatment uh, efficacy um, by using this individual uh, target. So this is a um, paper also published uh, in the human um, brain mapping in, the, in 2021. And it's also a researcher in, in China. And we are cooperating with them to uh, 
to realize the optimization of the computation of these uh, individual targets on the surface uh, brain area. And also, uh, we can provide uh, the hardware for the neural navigation of RTFI targets during the treatment. So, we can see uh, the results of this study. And the, this study is also an RTP uh, study and with uh, 37 publications. Uh, and the, the parameters is one and the, the total um, treatment phase is 14, 14 days. And uh, in stay, um, the total time is about 30 minutes. And uh, we can see the results um, from the near ground scale score. Uh, and uh, there are the significant uh, decrease uh, of the uh, year ground score uh, in the real group. And uh, there's also a, a significant difference between uh, these two groups. And uh, when we uh, see, uh, look through the responders and the non-response repeal, we can also find a difference uh, between the real and the scan. And uh, if uh, we calculate the response rates uh, in the real RTMS group, we can find that um, this number is also nearly uh, nearly uh, 50. Yeah, but this response is, uh, is defined as a 35 uh, reduction from the baseline year ground uh, scale. So, and, uh, in, a, in a traditional studies, um, this is 50, uh, uh, this 35 percent reduction is also called a, a full response. Um, but in the previous uh, studies, the full response um, is uh, about 30 percent. Yeah, but in this uh, research, the full response rate can achieve nearly um, 50 percent. So uh, that means uh, if we use um, from my guided, uh, guided uh, individual precise localization, we may get a uh, better um, treatment equity um, in our clinical treatment. The, yeah. So um, that is the, some strategies that we use to improve equity. And now we have to look through the safety fields of RTM treatment. So during uh, our clinical uh, use of RTMS, we should uh, use it based on the safety guidelines uh, published by the, the International uh, Clinical Physiological Federation. And uh, these guidelines um, explain uh, every details about the use of RTMS. And before um, the RTMS treatment, uh, we should uh, use this um, uh, this can have uh, safety skill to uh, to train uh, the help the, the patient the patients and the find if this patient uh, is forbidden to uh, use RTMS or some uh, specifics we should uh, pay attention to during the treatment. And uh, mm, besides uh, another important factor is the standard operation that we should. Uh, Operate the archive treatment according to our standard uh, guide. And uh, yeah, for example, the most important part is in you find you find the exact target and uh, make sure the precise localization. And uh, you have to determine the motor uh, motor cortex. Uh, Excitability level uh, by using the MNT test, and uh, that means you have to examine its uh, rest uh, motor thresholds or active motor thresholds before uh, you apply a treatment. And then you have to choose um, um, some related uh, protocol um, to treat um, a patient, and uh, yeah, and then the position of this target is also is very important. And um, after that, uh, you can fix uh, the color position by using this arm and uh, start the treatment. So uh, 
this is the uh, social platform that uh, into use uh, to uh, publish some news about our products and techniques and also some clinical uh, applications uh, to uh, our customers. Um, yeah, if you are interested, you can call us uh, on this platform. Okay. So uh, the site, language, and it's over. Do you have questions? Thank you.